Hello. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. stand up for a minute. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you, Lord God. We know, God, that all things do work together for good to them that love you and to those who are called according to your purpose. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that thou hast made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We bless the Lord with all our soul and all that is within us. Father, as we humble ourselves and as we yield to you today, we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will move among us. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place. We can't do nothing without you. We need you, Holy Spirit, to lead us and to guide us into all truth and to show us things to come. Now, Father, oh, my Lord, my God. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to speak to our hearts today. Thank you for helping us to, to line up with your plan, with your purpose for our lives, so that nothing would be hindered. Nothing would be able to stop this mighty moving force that you're releasing in this, in this land. And God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. Welcome to New Life of Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. You know, I just uh, just I just got back from a conference here. Amen. I'm just gonna we just got back from a conference. Amen. And uh, this was one of the most powerful conferences that I have been in, and and I don't know when. Amen. It was very very powerful. And you know. Remember what I said first of the year, my my New Year's resolution? Just to, get to get closer to who? God, God. To get closer to God. And Amen. Deep Amen. And, and, and deepen my relationship with him. Well, can you believe that the whole time at this conference, let me turn this down a bit. I'm getting kind of, I feel this heat too. Kind of strong. The whole time in this conference, that most of what they was talking about. Remember we talked about on. Uh, uh, remember we talked about uh, salvation and all this stuff. They were preaching that throughout the whole conference. And I'm thanking God. My heart desire was is to is to uh, empty my heart of everything of the of the natural of the natural man of the fleshly man and draw closer to you. And Father, you've given me every the tools that I need to do that. This whole conference. I mean, every message just like speaking, just like direct. It was powerful, and I and I so I sure enough enjoyed this that service, those services, and I, I enjoyed them so much that I ordered the DVDs. Amen on forever service, amen. But right now, God is placed upon for this for we in our new year now. For our, remember, I told you on our Tuesday nights, we're gonna start what? Talking about what? Prayer. So we start we start to talk about intercessory prayer, amen. The reason why I believe that God has called us to begin to uh, deal with this area because God has a God is calling for intercessors once again. God is calling for intercessors once again. Now, the reason why I'm saying that because you see the message that He got, the message that He gave me for the year 2020. Now I know everybody have their own message, but the message that God gave me for 2020 that He's going to visit His people. Amen. God going to visit His people 2020. Amen. So. And I and I began to I be, I've been reading or doing a lot of reading on that throughout the you know ever since God told me that about visitation and visiting Amen visit and uh, I'm seeing a lot of things but when God visited it, it, it's, it's not only talking about visit our sins it's talking about visit us it, it's talking about you know you can see a lot of areas a lot of things in from the Old Testament all into the New Testament when God visit things begin to happen 
Amen. Just like when when uh, 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 when 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 uh, Koshi Lerabakana, when God got ready to send the people into the promised land, they had a visitation. Amen. Before they was able, when they was in the wilderness, they were moving back and forth. They had to wait on the Spirit of God to move. They had to wait for, wait for God to move. Amen. So God is dealing with our hearts, and He's showing us that this message that He's given me for for the year it is about uh, 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 it is about judgment, and it's also about righteousness too. So it's about both. Amen. But now on Tuesday nights. God want me to begin to deal with deal with our hearts. God deal with our hearts about prayer. How are we going to draw closer to God? It's through prayer. How are we going to uh, how are we going to see ourselves the way God sees us by spending time with Him? Amen. Now He not called us just to pray. God has called us to be to to inter, to be intercessors. Our country right now need prayer. Amen. Our country need prayer. Amen. Our leaders need prayer right now. Amen. Jerusalem need a lot of prayer right now. Amen. And so what God is dealing with my heart about, the same thing he did with my heart about like three, four years ago when I, when I taught this a, a lot back then. But God is dealing with my heart about the same issue again because the enemy is trying to overthrow uh, the, the, the city of Jerusalem again. Amen. Trying to overthrow. Many people are being killed over there right now. Amen. Because of uh, the devil. It don't like God's people. And on the same thing right here in America. Amen. Uh, when they, well, they're not doing a whole lot of killing right now. But there's a lot of uh, deception. A lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, what they call it, uh, identity, theft, spiritually speaking. I'm not talking about naturally speaking. I'm talking about spiritually speaking. Identity, identity theft. In other words, the devil is going after the heart of man. Going after the mind of man. And also, we're going, we're going, to, be dealing, we're going to be dealing with these areas. Right now, we're going to start today off uh, teaching on how to prepare yourself. How many of you know intercessory prayers? It's not just uh, it's not just a time when we just come together and pray. It's a spiritual warfare. Yes, sir. Intercessory prayer is spiritual warfare. Amen. So we're gonna be we're gonna get we're gonna be dealing with that area. Right now, we're gonna get our open. We're gonna set the groundwork for this message. Amen. We're gonna set the groundwork for this message. And and as I do, I want you all to just prepare your hearts. Amen. Prepare your hearts to hear what the Spirit of God is saying because God is going to be God is going to speak to our hearts. God is going to speak to our hearts. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. And we have to be ready to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We have to be ready to hear what the Spirit of God is saying because we are in the right place at the right time. Amen. Glory to God. First of all, first of all, I want to take your attention. I want to turn your attention to uh, uh, the book of Romans, chapter 8. In verse number 34. Romans chapter 8, verse number 34. Amen. Let's just go there first, and then we're going to venture on into other areas. Romans 8, 34, and it reads. Amen. Who is the... Who, is, who, who is he that condemn it. It is it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even where? At the right hand of God who also make it what? Intercession for us. So as we get into this lesson we see that God His son Jesus, even now, is making intercession for us. He's at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Amen. There's a lot going on right now 
and 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 and, and uh, this message has to do with the the darkness that is that is invading the earth right now. And this is why we have to invade America. This is why we have to pray. Now, folks, I'm just I'm just gonna tell you like this: We're in the last days. Oh yes. We are definitely in the last days, and God is calling us to Himself. God is calling us to Himself. Amen. Now, when we when we see what when we see what God is saying, when we understand what God is doing, it won't be hard for you to draw close to Him because you see you got you got a, you got a choice. I like the way I heard this message this weekend, this this past weekend. Well, it was this. Well, actually, it was uh, uh, just uh, Monday morning. This particular message, uh, Tommy Barnett was up ministering, and and he was and he was talking about he was, he was, he said that there's two boxes, amen, and you got to choose one or the other. The top box is 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 talking about your life and and what you are doing and and what you believe and what you're praying for and and so forth and so on amen and the bottom box is talking about the life of God and what God and what God wants for you and what God want to do for you amen and so you have to make a decision because you see we have been so caught up in the things of this world that we have forgotten that God has us at his heart. Amen. And so we want what we want. And, and we pray those, Father, please, God, I need help. I need, I need this and I need that and I need, oh, God, I, I know you. I, oh, God, thank you. You know, and God might be saying, God might be saying this right here. Just pray for your brothers. Just pray for your sister. Amen. And then when it comes to you, just let it be a surprise. <laughs> Just let it be a surprise because you see when you when you when you are putting others before you when you're putting others before you you saying father it's not about me it's about you and what you want to do in their lives oh yeah and then all of a sudden you, you you look at the boxes again and say, if I look, check this box, this is what I'm this is what I want and what I'm doing and what I'm and and, and, and but when I look at the box, the, the, the next box is that what God wanted, what God is doing, and God planning purpose for my life. So and when we examine our lives, we can see that we have often put our lives above his life for us. God has a plan for us, but our plans, see, we want, we want to make our plans. We want to get God to endorse our plans. <laughs> we want to get God to endorse our plans. And, 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 God, and God said, uh, don't, uh, God is not going to come, he's not going to uh, endorse your plans just because they sound good to you, just because they look good to you. Why would you want to try to push God down to your level? God is a God all by himself. We can't stop him. We can't help him. Only thing we can do is do our part. So he said, now, up this box, you check this box, then it's all about you. But if you check this box, and it's all about me, what I'm going to do in you and through you, so we have to make a decision during the year of 2020. Is it going to be about what God wants for us? See, I, I told God in December, Jan, uh, January the 1st, my New Year's resolution was to draw closer to him, to spend more time with him, to pull off those fleshly and those uh, 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 natural cravings and desires that that that, that the enemy have, have 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 caused me to 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 get get trapped in, and this actually should be all of our desire, because you see, 
We will never be able to fulfill God's plan, God's purpose for our lives as long as we are caught on what we want, or focus on what we want. But when we get out, when we lose sight of ourselves, then the will of God will become vivid. Not just vivid, it becomes alive in us. It becomes alive, amen, in us. So, in, 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 in Romans chapter 8, verse number 1, Let's look at verse 32 and 30, 30, 32, 33, 34. He that, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, who shall, how shall he, how shall he not with him also freely do what? Give us all things. Give us all things. And verse number 33 said, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that he is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also make an intercession for us. Amen. Who also make an intercession for us. So, we have a high priest right now interceding for us. Amen. We have a high priest right now interceding for us. Glory to God. Now. Amen. And when I when I talk about this message, when I deal with this message, I like I like to 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 bring us bring us back to the to the Bible because see, the Bible has many cases of people standing up on the, on the behalf of others. So now let's go to the book of uh, let's go to the book of uh, Exodus Now let's go to Ezekiel first. Let's go to Ezekiel Hallelujah I'm, I'm going to release a fresh anointing in this place today, folks. So, it's already here. huh? It's already, here. it's already here. You feel it, huh? Oh, oh my God! Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. In Exodus chapter twenty-two, Ezekiel twenty-two. I mean, excuse me, Ezekiel twenty-two, and let's look at verse number. 30. Ezekiel 22, verse number 30. And it reads, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not do what? Destroy it. And then what he said? But I found none. But I found none. Amen. Y'all see that, right? And so God is calling for, for He's calling for people that will take this call seriously. And I know that we all have our, we all are busy, we all have our our, our chore, we all have things to do. Amen. And we 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 want to. But, but 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 we need to we need to look at this because you see God is looking for someone that he can that he can depend on right now. He's not looking for someone that's gonna that's gonna uh, uh, that say I'll do it and then just walk away and forget all about it. God is looking for someone that not only would just say Lord I will be that intercessor. I will be the one that make a hedge. I will stand in the gap. I will pray for. Uh, uh, this city. I will pray for this community. I will pray for this church. I will pray for this people. I will pray for our nation. I will pray for our leaders. I will pray for Jerusalem. See, God is looking for someone that will say, uh, Lord, I, you, you don't have to look no further. 
here am I. Amen. Here am I. Yeah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse number 5, I think. Verse number 8. Here am I. Send me. And I'll go. I'll be that intercessor. I'll be the one that will stand in the gap. I'll be the one that you can count on in these last days. I'll be the one that will begin to pray and bind the principalities and the powers that is working against our community, working against our church, working against our, our, our leaders, working against our land. God is looking for someone that will take this burden <coughs> upon themselves and begin to stand in the gap just like he said right here. He said, I sought for a man in the book of uh, Ezekiel 22. He said, I sought for a man that will make up the head. You know, that will stand in the gap. That You know, when they talk about making, when they, when they talk about making up the head and standing in the gap, see, that means the, the, the protection wall has been breached. You know when you stand when you when you when you, when the soldiers out in the field and they and they on the they, they in, in the war zone and then all of a sudden the enemy he he gets he gets in and he breaks the rank he he he, he breaks a hole into the into the uh, what you call that there the front line the front line and 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 he and he pushes his way through there all of a sudden that wall is breached. And the people behind that wall, all of a sudden, are what? In trouble. <clears throat> Amen? And so this is what God is seeing. The, the walls of America was breached. And God is trying to reestablish the perimeter. <clears throat> Y'all understand what I'm saying? God is going to reestablish the perimeter around our land. That's just like that's just like uh, President Donald Trump in Texas. He's putting up this wall. Right. Amen. <laughs> a natural wall. Huh? A natural wall. A natural wall. That's right. This is a natural wall. Amen. But when they breach that wall, it's, it's an invasion taking place. And this is what the enemy is trying to do. See, I'm going to tell you, God showed me, God showed me that darkness, I saw it coming like a big old tidal wave, folks. I saw it coming like a big old tidal wave. And I'm saying, and I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the spirit, and I'm lying in my bed, and I'm seeing all this in my spirit. Then all of a sudden, I said, oh God, what a great move of your spirit. And God, he, I mean, he, he spoke to my heart very strong, very firm. He said, that's not a move of my spirit. He said, that is darkness that is moving upon the face of the earth. Then he said, warn my people. He said, warn my people. And so, and so now, he's calling us back to intercessory prayer once again because there's an enemy trying to break the perimeter again. Amen? Trying to get through Trying to trying to tear down the, the, the perimeter that God is setting up. And so we got to, God is looking for intercessors. He's looking for prayer wars. He's looking for a people that will take this to heart and make up the hedge and stand in the gap. Amen. He's looking for a people that will say, Lord, you don't have to look no further. Here am I. Amen. Hallelujah. And so when we see this, when we see, when we can understand what God is doing, then it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be a, a, a problem for us to to just get aboard, to 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 get on to get on board with what God is wanting to do right now, Amen. See, see, there, there, there's there's an enemy that is trying to to knock you out. He's working against your identity. Behind the scenes. And this is why I'm believing that God is going to reestablish prayer and Bible studies back in the schools. If I'm telling you, if this you all these all these all these shooting and stuff in school, it didn't start until they took prayer out of the school, until they took Bible, until they stopped teaching in the school. That's when it all started, when they did that. They took the Pledge of Allegiance out, too. 
And they took the Pledge of Allegiance out too, that's right. When they took it out of the school. And I believe that God's going to put it all back. I'm believing that God's going to put it all back. Amen. Because it's time for this generation to begin. See, this new generation that's, that's been birthed into the earth. It's time for this generation to begin to understand what our forefathers went through. America was established upon Judeo godly principles. It wasn't just founded. It was founded upon the word of God. The same as Jerusalem. And God is going to reestablish them. Amen. And this is why during this time, during this time of intercessory prayer, we're going to be praying for America. We're going to be praying for Jerusalem. And we're going to be praying for our church leaders. Because I know if I had problems in my life as a man of God, how many other men of God having problems in their lives? <clears throat> Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. Every man that is doing, try, that, that is trying their, 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 their best to do what God has called them to do, they are having some, they're having some kind of thing that's coming against them. I don't care who they are. And so God wants us to pray for our Christian leaders also. I'm telling you, this conference that I just went through, it really set a fresh fire in my spirit. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And, 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 they, and they were preaching about uh, salvation. They were preaching about uh, returning to God. They were preaching about all the things that I told God I want, that I wanted for this year for myself. And I said, oh my God. I told my honey, I said, I said honey, let's just, let's just go to the altar and let them pray for us. <laughs> she said, well, I don't need to be praying. I said, I said it's regardless when you need to be prayed for or not. This is not about what you need. This is about what I believe what God is wanting. And so we both went up to the altar. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And, 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 uh, and I feel like I was under attack the, when I, on my first two nights or two, two, three days there. I feel like I was under attack. I, the devil tried to keep me from, from concentrating. Amen. Trying to keep me from concentrating. But then all of a sudden, I, I said, in the name of Jesus, I, I rebuke every distraction. I, Father, I just, I just, I just, I just said, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll set what you want me to say. It doesn't matter to me as long as I'm in this meeting. And once I, once I settled that in my spirit, it was not hard. I sat there and I received everything that was said. Amen. I loved it so much that I ordered all the CDs, the DVDs. <laughs> I ordered the whole set, the whole set of DVDs. And, and and I told my wife we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna get into this stuff we're gonna go back over these things again and again, amen. Go go back over it again and again. The most striking example in the in in the in the, in this thing we're talking about when you're talking about this. Look at uh, the life of Abraham, amen. And the life of Abraham. But let's 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 let me just turn over here for a second, amen. In the book of Genesis chapter Genesis chapter eighteen. <clears throat> Amen. I want. Let me let me make sure this is the one I want. Then we're gonna. Okay. Yep. Yeah, this is what I want. Let's go here. Cause see, this is a good example of an intercessor right here. What are we about? What I'm going to talk to you about right now is a good example of an intercessor. We're going to talk about Abraham for a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all are are getting this? Because you see, God is going to deal with your hearts. Because during this time on Tuesday nights, this is what we're going to be talking about mostly this whole, this whole year. Prayer and intercession. 
And then not only are we going to talk about it, we're going to get together and some nights and have prayer. We're going to come in some nights and have prayer nights. Like uh, from, 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 from about 6 to about midnight on some nights. Amen. Like 6.30 to midnight on some of these nights this coming year, this year too. Because this, we need to spend time with God this year like never before. How many of you know that the more time you spend with God, the more of the stronghold that the enemy has brought in your life or in your household amongst your family can be destroyed? God wants his people to have a hunger and a thirst for him like never before. And that's, going, that's, that's not going to come by sitting at home watching uh, Days of Our Lives. <laughs> saying through the hourglass. It's not, going to, it's not going to come. It's not going to happen to you. It's not going to happen for you if you're sitting at home just watching uh, uh, Lassie and As the World Turn and all this stuff. Amen. It's going to happen for you the moment you make a decision in your heart. God, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want my fleshly desires to be quenched. And God, the only way they can be quenched is by your word. And they are anointed to lift burdens and destroy you. I'm telling you, God wants to bring this church, not only this church, but churches all around, into a deeper walk with him. There's so many people in church right now that go to church and, 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 and they go to church just to say they've been to church. And when they walk out of church, they're cussing and drinking and smoking dope and everything else, just like they've never been to church. I know what I'm talking about. There's, I can go to I can go to people that I can go to some people house right now, and I know they are Christians. I know they go to church, but every word come out of their mouth is every other word is a cuss word. And I'm thinking, what do you go to church? What are you learning in church? Is this what they're teaching you? If this is what they teach you, I don't want no parts of it. Amen. But see, God is looking. See, this is some of the things God wants to intercede for. He wants to intercede for the weak Christians. How many of you have been weak in your life and, and, and allowed the enemy to, to take advantage of you? We all have, haven't we? So we can't point our fingers at no one, right? Only thing we can do is, is pray for them. That's all God is asking of us, to make up the hedge, to stand in the gap and pray for them. Just like someone have prayed for us. Someone has stood in the gap for us. Someone has interceded for us. Amen? This is what God is asking for us to do. For our community. For our city. For our state. For our nation. For our leaders. It ain't nothing to do with the leaders. It's about us doing what God calling us to do. Now, you may not even be from this country, but at the same time, God is telling you the same thing to do over your country, over your nation. Amen. You might be listening to me from Pakistan. You might be listening to me from India. You might be listening to me from Africa. You might be listening to me from Indonesia. You might be listening to me from, from whatever. Amen. And God is dealing with your heart by being an intercessor over your city, over your community, over your leaders, your People. Religious. Yeah. Amen. So this is this is gonna whatever whatever wherever you are, wherever country you're from, it doesn't matter. Because you see, wherever we are, we need prayer. We need prayer. Amen. So y'all, we're right here in the book of Genesis chapter 18 right now. Genesis chapter 18. Amen. Because I believe that God wants to bring us to a place where we will see the hand of God moving on our land. Amen. Doing our, I'm going to get to this in a minute. 
But during our intercession prayer, when we're praying for our leaders of our land, we want to pray for Benjamin Netanyahu, and that's how I pronounce his name, over in, in Jerusalem, Israel. We want, we want to call his name out. Amen. We want to call his name out. Ask God divine protection over him, his family, and ask God to give him supernatural wisdom, divine discernment on how to lead the people. And then when we pray for America, we're going to pray for we're going to pray for Donald J. Trump, President Trump. Uh, we're not praying for him because we like him or dislike him. That's not why we're doing it. We're doing it because God has commanded us to do so. Okay? So it's not about like or dislike. It's about honoring God. Praying for the leaders of our land. Okay? So we're going to ask God to, to, to watch over and to protect this man and to give him divine discernment. The same thing we're going to be praying for Benjamin Netanyahu. We're going to pray for this president. Pray for his family. And pray for that he will be able to make wise decisions. Godly led decisions concerning our land and our people. Amen. Whew. Oh my God. I feel the Holy Ghost on this thing today. And then... Once we pray for them, then we're going to pray for our church leaders, the fivefold ministry gifts. We're going to pray for the fivefold ministry gifts. Amen. We're going to we're going to ask God to help the fivefold ministry gift to make divine decisions concerning leading His people. We're going to ask God to give them the ability to stand. For righteousness and expose sin. Amen. So many people are looking at sin and not even saying anything about it. And this is why the church is losing, the, the church is, is losing right now in America. The church is, 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 is weak right now in America because sin has been, I mean, it's just been acting upon people. And, and, and no one is saying anything about it. And God is saying, it's time that we pray for our people. Amen. Now, there ain't nothing against no... Now, he's not, he's not pointing his finger at, at, at no certain individual. Don't get me wrong. He's not, he's not pointing his finger because, because the Bible said, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Amen. So he's not pointing fingers. But, he's, but he also wants to realize this. The wages of sin is what? Death. The wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And this is why we have to pray. Because the devil is trying to push, trying to snatch him into hell with him. And the only way they're going to be set free is that people begin to make up their heads and stand in the gap and pray for them. You probably got brothers and sisters right now. The devil got a stronghold trying to choke the life out of them right now. Amen. Members of your own very and your very own families. Amen. This is what God wants us to pray for. God. Are you want to see them free this week, this year? Amen. You want to see not only your life being drawn close to God, but your family members, your loved ones. You want to see them draw close to God? then I'm telling you how to do it. We're going to make up the hedge and we're going to stand in the gap and we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, in Genesis chapter 18, notice what it says right here. Verse number one. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mirah. And he and he set in and he sat in the tent door in the in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. What happened? He had a visitation. Amen. He had a visitation. Now notice the visitation that he's that he's having right now is about pending judgment. 
We're gonna see, you're going to see that. But that's not what we're talking about. We're not going to get into that because that's for my Sunday morning's message. We're not going to, be, we're not going to get into that. But, but we, have to, we, have to, we have to prepare ourselves, though. Okay, verse number two said, verse number two said, And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. Pass not away. Notice he said, if I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. Woo, glory to God. I pray thee from, the, from thy servant. Verse 4. This is Genesis. Those of you just joined us, this is Genesis chapter 18, verse number 4. Let a little water, I pray thee, I pray you, be fetched. And walk and, and, and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your heart. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come unto your servant. Look how Abram talking to these angels that showed up. Now, I believe that one of these angels was not just an angel. I believe one of these angels was the Lord. <laughs> My God. Are y'all get are y'all feeling what I'm feeling in this place today? My God, I'm telling you, amen. And so he said, verse number, verse number five said, and I will fetch a muscle of bread and comfort your and comfort ye your, your, your heart. That listen, after that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abram, and Abraham hasted unto his tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three morsels, three measures of fine milk, knit it, and make cakes upon the upon the heater. Verse number seven. And Abram ran unto the unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good, and gave it unto the a young man. And he hastened to dress it. Verse 8. And he took the, and he took the, oh my God. Mm, I like this. <laughs> you like buttermilk? <laughs> oh my God. And he took, and he took buttermilk. He took butter and milk. And, uh, and the calf, which, which he had dressed. And set it before them. And he, and he stood by them under the tree. And they did what? They did eat. They did eat. Verse number nine said, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have what? A son. Shall have a son. And Sarah, Sarah heard it, and she did what? She heard in the tent door, which was which was behind him, and and she what she laughed. Verse number verse number eleven. And and Abraham and Abraham and Abraham and Sarah were old and well striking in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of children, of the manner of women. In other words, she was gone, dried up. <laughs> oh, just think though, when a, it doesn't matter how dried, how dried up they are when they get in the hand of God, God can cause them to be so moist, <laughs> fertile. Oh boy, that's what I love about my God. Amen. He He can take He can take something that did and make it come alive again. Amen. And so he said, right in verse number, verse number twelve. Therefore, Sarah laughed. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. After, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? 
and my and and and, and my Lord being old also. Notice that my Lord being old also talking about Abraham. So not only am I old, but look at this old dried up man. Right? <laughs> can I have can I, can I have pleasure being old, dried up? Amen. And look at him. You talk about me. Look at him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But you see, but you see, God is going to do something. Why? Because God is about to show Himself strong. See, what seems to be impossible for men is not impossible for God. It's not impossible for God. Hallelujah! Y'all need, y'all need, y'all need to get this. Amen. You need to get this. Is it? Is it, in verse number fourteen? Look what it says. There it is, right there. Is anything too hard? For who? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah shall have a son. Amen. Now, the reason why I'm reading all this is because, you see, we're about to see <clears throat> that not only is uh, Sarah is going to have a son, but we're going to see Abraham starting to set an example on how to intercede for an ungodly nation. Amen. Amen. How many know America has fallen away from God? It has. It has. And they're worshiping Baal too. What do you mean by worshiping Baal? Off and up. Sacrifice. What is the sacrifice? Abortion. Yeah. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> but notice what he said, right? Verse number verse, verse number what? Verse number verse number uh, 15. And Sarah did and Sarah denied saying, I laugh not, for she for she was afraid. And she and he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the, and, and the man and the men arose and the men rose up from thence and took to and, and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them. Notice that and Abraham went what? With them. To to bring them to the on the way. And he and the Lord said, Shall I hide? Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which the thing which I do? And what should I hide from him the thing that I come in this direction for? Should I cover it up from him? Surely he will see it. If, I'm just, you know. But I like I like what he said right in verse number verse number 18. Seeing thou see that seeing that Abraham shall be what? Seeing that Abraham shall be surely, shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be what? Blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his house. He commanded his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. What did he speak of Abraham? No, it was in verse number 20. Verse number 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And because there is, and because their sin is very grievous. I will go now I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their face from this and went toward Sodom. But Abraham, here we go, folks. Here we go. Notice what he said? But Abraham. Woo! My God. I feel the power of God in this place today. 
Hallelujah. Now, where we at? Yeah, I want to make sure y'all are still with me. <laughs> Verse number 22 said, But the men turned their face from this and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Notice where, notice where Abraham was standing? He was standing before the Lord. What was he, what, why was he still standing before the Lord? Because he saw that the Lord was about to bring judgment upon a people. A wicked nation. Amen? But notice what he said, verse number 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Would thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? And see, this is why we have to start interceding. This is why we got to, we got to start praying right now. This is why we got to start seeking the face of God right now. Amen? Because God said the year of 2020 that he's going to visit his people. Verse number 20, verse number 24. Preadventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Would thou also destroy the, the destroy and not spare for fifth for the for the for the uh place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner. So slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? See, this is why God wants us to intercede, because God wants to spare the lives of people. That's why we must begin to preach repentance again. This is why we must begin to preach the message of salvation again. People need to understand this is not a time that we just lay around and just have fun. And remember what God did when 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 Cor, uh, <laughs> Moses, you take too much upon yourself. <laughs> We're going to be talking about that too, but not right now. <laughs> Amen. So see, Moses stood in the gap too, but they refused to listen to him. And the earth opened up her mouth for them. That's right. Amen. So it pays to listen. It pays to listen. So now, verse number, verse number 25, verse number 26 said, And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then will I, then I will spare all the place for their sake. Notice that then I will spare, will spare all the place for their sake. Amen. And Abraham wasn't happy. He wasn't satisfied with that. He saw that he, he saw that he, had, he, he saw that God uh, yielded to his request. And now, when he saw that God yielded to his request, he began to pray. He began to talk to him even more. See, this is what God, this is why God don't want you to give up. This is why God wants you to be persistent. The moment you begin, the moment God puts someone on your heart and start and, and, and start you to pray for them, just because they choose not to do what 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 God was on what you what God is telling you to pray for them about, just because they look like nothing's gonna happen, don't mean you just give up on them. That don't mean you give up on them. Abraham didn't give up because he said, I will spare a city for, for 50. Abraham began to, began to be persistent. He began to press in a little bit more. He began to, he said, hmm, if he'll do it for 50, when will he do it for 40? Let me, let me see. Amen. So he began to, he began to, he began to, uh, begin to talk to God even more. Amen. Intercession, intercession is, is, is not just it's not just when you when he can uh, give in to a, 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 a one area of your prayer when you uh, when you accomplish one area of prayer you get to answer yes on one area of prayer that don't mean that don't means you stop right there just because you got an answer said yes I spare amen 
That means that you have begun to understand your position as a priest. You can bargain. You can plead. What they call, that's why they call it a plea bargain. Amen. You can talk to the one that has the ability to destroy all. And if you can persuade him not to by not giving up, by being persistent, then you, my friend, have just broken down one of the demonic strongholds that have been persistent for decades. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Abraham was standing up before God, saying, telling him, hey man, don't be, don't be so rough on the people. Don't, give them an opportunity. Spare them. And God said, okay, I'll spare for 50. And Abraham said, oh, oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Let's go, let's talk a little bit more. <laughs> Amen. So now we see here, oh, my God. I'm see, I'm going to be able to, y'all know I'm not going to finish this tonight. Y'all already know that because this is something going to be going on for some time now. But my heart desire right now is for you guys to, to get a hold, to, to get, to see what God, to see the area that God is leading us to. Because, you see, intercessory prayer is not about you. Innocence prayer is not about you. Because you see Abraham right here. He's not even talking about himself. Y'all see this? He's talking about a, a, a people that he don't even know. He's pleading for people that he don't even know. Amen. So now, when we begin to intercede, when we, when we begin to talk to, to the Father, don't think that it's all about you. It's all about who God placed in your heart to pray for. That's who it's about. Amen. That's who it's about. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, when I when I look at this, I begin. I, I see. I see that God is wanting to get our attention so so strong, so bad. Amen. Now see, now this, what, this, now this lesson right here is going to help you draw close to God. It's going to help you draw close to God. What, what time is it? 7.44. Okay. I got, I, I, got, I, got, I got six more minutes. Okay. I got six more minutes. So let me, let, me just, let me just do this right here. Oh, she let Look, look right here at verse number, verse number 27. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon myself. In other words, I'm taking a chance because you've already agreed for 50. And he said, I'm taking a chance right now because if you were spared for 50, I, I, I just can't, I just, I just got to ask you this. I just got, I just got, I just got to ask you this. No, is it? Because Abraham, Abraham see what he what he what he what, what, he, he got God's attention now. Amen. Behold, now I have now I have taken upon I have talked I have taken taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which Yeah, verse number 20. Here we go. Behold, now I have taken upon myself to speak unto the Lord, which am I, which am, which am but dust and ashes. Preadventure there shall lack five of the fifty. Five of the fifty. Okay, there, there we go. Preadventure there shall there shall lack five of the fifty. Righteous. Would thou destroy? All the city for the lack of five, and he said, "If I find there forty and what five, I will not destroy it." And he spoke, and he spoke unto him yet again, and said, "Preadventure there shall be forty found there." And he said, "I will not 
I would do. Notice how, notice how you keep on. He, that's right. He count down, and and he's gonna bring them all the way down. Look, look right here. Where's that verse number? Verse, uh, look at verse number thirty-one. And he said, "Behold, now I have found. I have taken upon myself. I have taken upon me to speak unto the unto the Lord. Preadventure there be there shall be uh, twenty found. There shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the twenty sake. See, now he's getting on down, and he just keep on going, keep on going." And Amen. And just and just keep on going. Then look at verse number 32. And he said, and he said, Oh Lord, oh let not the Lord be angry, but I will speak yet but this once. Preadventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. And the Lord went his way. As soon as he had left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Notice, notice how he interceded. Notice how he remember we talked about in Ezekiel 22, verse. What is that? Verse, verse 30? He said, Notice how Abraham made up the hedge for the ungodly nation. Notice how he stood in the gap for the ungodly nation. Notice how he didn't give up just because uh, he, he got an answer for 50, and then he got an answer for 45, then he got an answer for, for 30, then he got an answer for 35, then he got an answer for, for, for all the way down to 10. Amen. Notice how Abraham, he was so persistent that God looked at him. I mean, I mean, because you see, he made Abraham what? The father of what? Men and nations. So Abraham, he had a father's heart. That's why he was so concerned about people. Amen. He did not want people, he did not want the people to be destroyed. He did not want them to be put to death. He wanted them to be spared. And so he prayed, he pleaded, he interceded, he made up the head. He stood in the gap before God for the land. Our last scripture for today, 2 Chronicles. But y'all see this, right? 2 Chronicles 7. And verse number chapter 7. Are you there? Now let's look at verse number 12. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayers, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. So this is what this is what God is looking at you right now. He's looking at you as a house of sacrifice because we can ready to go on this fast. And he's looking at the sacrifice that you're going to make during this fast. So God is looking at you right now. Amen. <clears throat> now and it said, verse number, verse number 13 said, If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, if I command the locals to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and you know everything that God is saying right now is if? In other words, there's a condition that has to be met. Amen. Now look at the condition, verse number 14. That was God is saying. He said, if that word if is a powerful word for this, for this right here. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and pray. And do what? And pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. 
and will forgive their sin. Then I will heal the land. Restoration comes when we start praying, folks. When we humble ourselves and begin to seek his face, begin to pray, then we will hear from he will he will he, we will hear from heaven. He will forgive our sin and he will heal our land. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is y'all lesson. I want y'all to go back and meditate on this. We're going to start our fasting on Sunday. Now, every Thursday and Friday, every Thursday and Friday, starting next week, we're going to be praying the Daniel's Prayer. Every Thursday and Friday, we're going to start praying the Daniel's Prayer. How many times do Daniel pray a day? Huh? Three times a day. Morning, noon, and evening. Three times a day, Daniel prayed. We're going to implement this prayer two days a week. Every week. For the year of 2020. We're going to be praying in the morning. 9 a.m. That's going to be Thursday morning and Friday morning, 9 a.m. We're going to be putting God people first. In other words, we're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're going to pray for Jerusalem at 9 a.m. Thursday and Friday morning. We're going to pray minimum of 10 minutes. You can do a lot of prayer in 10 minutes. You can come, you can come, you can cover a lot of ground in 10 minutes. That don't mean you only can pray 10 minutes. You can pray as long as you want to, but you start at 9 a.m., but you got to go at least 10 minutes. Minimum. And don't feel condemned if you forget. Don't feel condemned if you forget. Just get it done before that hour is up. But please try to do it at 9 a.m. Because that's when everyone is going to be joining in with you. It's going to be like a corporate prayer, but we're going to be in our individual homes. You, some of you might be on your work, just like me. I'm a businessman. I might be at work, and I have to, and I have to just, uh, just pull myself away for a few minutes. Go use the bathroom. That's this. Go, say I'm going to the bathroom. And I'm going to, in my time while I'm walking, I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be asking God to, to guard the borders of Jerusalem. Protect the people of the land. And asking God to, 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 to for, for the, on, on behalf of Benjamin Netanyahu, amen, and then for his family protection. Then we're going to be praying for 12, at 12 noon, we're going to be praying for the President of the United States of America. We're going to be praying for his family. We're going to pray for all of them that under his leadership. This is very important, folks. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost all over this thing today. We're going to pray a minimum of 10 minutes. You, like I said before, you can cover a lot in 10 minutes. You can pray more as long as you want to, but the minimum is 10 minutes. And then we're going to pray again at 3 p.m. At 3 p.m., we're going to pray for the body of Christ, the leaders, the fivefold ministry gifts. After you pray for them, then you're going to pray for your lost loved ones. You're going to pray for your families. 
We're not gonna be we're not gonna be praying for we're not gonna be praying for ourselves. We're not gonna focus on ourselves. We're gonna focus on that what on the heart of God. And by doing so, God gonna sneak up on you <laughs> and He's gonna bless you for your obedience. You're going to be taken care of spiritually because when you're praying for them, God got somebody else praying for you. Remember the, remember, remember the scripture? A spiritual law. When you give, it's given back to you. Amen? When you give, it's given back to you. So, and we're going to be praying for the uh, body. We're going to pray for our spiritual leaders, the fivefold ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Then we're going to be praying for the our family members, the head of households, and our children. Amen. Mamas and dads, sisters and brothers and children. Amen. Then on Thursday. That's, that's Thursday right there I just gave you. Then Friday, you're going to repeat the same thing. Now, when you don't know what to pray for, just pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. If you, if you run out of things to say, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Because when you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying to God alone. You pray in the perfect will of God. The devil won't be able to understand it. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I ask you, Father, right now to assign ministry prayer warriors, angels, prayer warrior angels, let them be assigned to everyone that take upon themselves this assignment. Whether it be here in my church, whether it be in another city, whether it's in another country, whether it's in another state, Father, whoever take this cause upon themselves, I'm asking you, Father, to assign to them a warring angel in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that you would help us to pray your perfect will over these areas that you have placed within my heart to focus on. And over these leaders and over our families and over our communities and over our cities and over our states, as we pray for our leaders, God, you're going to begin to move in our communities. You're going to begin to move in our cities. You're going to begin to move in our states because, God, we are honoring you and you're going to work those things out that concerns us. And so we thank you for it in advance in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I ask you for a special anointing right now, the prayer mantle to rest upon these people. Let the intercessory prayer mantle rest upon these people. The priestly, they, Father, they're stepping into the priestly office now. And Jesus, we know that you are praying for us according to Romans 8. You are the high priest. You are, you are interceding for us. And we're going to intercede for the land. We're going to intercede for the people. And God, you're going to watch over your word to perform it in our lives. We thank you for it in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and take about evening offering. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I, 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 I hope and pray that people all around the world that watches, that watches my ministry will get a hold of this and begin to join us and in interceding and praying. Amen. For our nation, for our country, and for our leaders. Amen.
And I believe we'll see this happening. People from all over. Amen. God going to join intercessors to us. Now, we're going to go ahead and take our offering. Amen. And then we're going to pray. And I believe my wife got some birthday cake over next door. <laughs> it's my birthday. How you know? Oh, oh, oh. oh I, I, <laughs> this is... Amen. But anyway, it's, going, it's, it's good. It's good. It's good. <coughs> Father, we thank you. For those that are, want to give over to, on, online, Larry Bergen Ministry, LarryBergenMinistries.com Amen. You can sow your seed there and God is going to watch over his word to perform it in your life. thank you for this gift, this tithe, this offering Father that we are presenting to you Father this is a portion of our livelihood that we're giving to you because you the one that gave us the strength and you enable us to do this so Father we give right now willingly and cheerfully Father we give with a willing heart. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch everyone that is sowing today into this ministry to help us to do what you call us to do. I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to begin moving upon them in ways that you've never moved before in their lives. Showing them, Father, that you are God. And nothing is too hard for you. And as they give, Father, every dollar has a face. Let every face on every dollar represent people in their lives, people that they know. And Father, during this year, we claim their souls for the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We declare, Father, their salvation. We declare that they are born again. We declare that they are saved. We declare that they are in the house of God, being strengthened through the teaching and the preaching of the word. And God, we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. So those of you, as you give, I don't believe in God that he's going to strengthen you. Hallelujah. In every area. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life right now, I'm going to give you that opportunity to do so. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, and you want to be born again, you want to ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart, I know that these are here right now, they've already done that. But you may be with me by the internet and you may say, well, Pastor, I want to give my life right. This year, I'm expecting a change in my life. This year, I'm expecting a, a turnaround in my life. Pastor, will you please pray for me? I need a breakthrough in my life, 2020. I want to draw close to God. I want to be, I want to, I want to get on that. I want to be one of those prayer warriors that's, that God is going to use during this time. Pastor, I want to be used by God. Will you please pray for me? that I will be used by God also, praying for my people, praying for my nation, praying for my leaders, praying for Jerusalem, praying for our, our church leaders.
Pastor, I want to be a part of that. But first, I need to be born again. I need to ask Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sin. I want to pray for you right now. If that's you, I want to pray for you right now. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. Renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Today, as I confess, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Right now, the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of you. Amen. You may be listening to me right now. You say, Pastor, I need prayer. Will you please pray for me? If any of you here right now need prayer right now, let me, I'll pray for you right now. Anyone want prayer today? Do you have a special prayer request? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear sister, Lord God. Father, I cancel every demonic assignment against her mind, her will, her emotions, against her spirit, soul, and body. I release her from every argument right now that's working against her. And I release the peace of God that's a passive all understanding that will keep her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus. Father, you love her. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch her right now. That she will know that your hand rests upon her from this day forward. I thank you for it. I thank you, Father, for divine help and healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you want me to anoint her? I thought you were going to fall over for a minute there. In the name of Jesus. Father, fresh anointing for 2020. Fresh anointing. Two. Ooh. I did, let me just use it since it's already open. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for the fire of the Holy Ghost burning in his heart like never before. Everything, God, that has not been placed in his heart by you, God, you are, you are purging him, you are cleansing him, you are purifying him, you are burning it out. You're causing him to see himself as a man of valor, a holy man, a man of the word, in Jesus' name. My God, my God, my God. Come on, sister. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that fresh anointing upon my sister right now. Father, I cancel every demonic Assignment against her mind, will, emotion, her spirit, soul, and body. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, set her free. Set her totally free. Ah, yeah. In the name of Jesus, spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every demonic assignment against her emotions right now. Father, let the purging fire rest upon her right now. Purging fire right now in Jesus' name. Everything that is not of you, burn it off. Purge her. Purge her of every unclean work. In the name of Jesus, fire. Fire. Purging fire. 
Hallelujah. Purging fire. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. In Jesus' name. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. And he that the Son set free is free indeed. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Free. 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 Father, let the anointing lift the burdens and destroy the yokes right now. Every yoke that been placed on her by the enemy, let it be lifted and destroyed right now by the anointing. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. There it is. Receive, receive. Hallelujah. Receive. Jesus. Father, I cancel in the spiritual realm every argument that have worked against her mind, will, and emotion. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the anointing right now and I declare and decree divine help, divine health and healing. In the name of Jesus, I speak to her body and I speak to every joint. I speak to every muscle. I speak to every 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 organ. And I say, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, I release the peace of God that's a pass of all understanding shall keep her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus. And Father, I release the fire. That fire. Allah basa Ah! That Persian fire. Persian fire. Burn, burn, burn! Everything that is not like you, Father. I declare, Father, she's free. She's free. She's free. She's free. 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 Fire. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. Father, and as she into this fast, Father, you will direct her in this fast. Hallelujah. You give her the you give her a direction on which way to fast, and your name will be glorified in the fast. I thank you for it now, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Bondage, chains been broken. Thank you. Word curses broken. Thank you, Jesus. Word curses broken. Woo! Word curses broken off of you. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Word curses. Word curses. They're broken in Jesus' name. They're broken off you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. My God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody been speaking things over your life. Hallelujah. That was not sent by God. And God said, Word curses are broken. Lord. Word curses are broken. Thank you, Lord. Evil words have been spoken over you. They thought they were, they thought they were yes. speaking well, but it was yes. evil. Yes. Witchcraft. Yes. Witchcraft. Hallelujah. Witchcraft. Hallelujah. It's broken. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank it's broken. Oh my God, I feel you know, the Holy Ghost in this place. They're, they're bringing calls now, you know. Yeah. On the phones, and they got a call, and it was, and I knew it right away. This man started call, talking. The Holy Spirit said, you know, use witchcraft, and that's what the Spirit was coming. Yeah. Yeah, he was evil, but he was trying to get me to, to respond to this call, and I knew what it was. I came in, I started pleading. Amen. Amen. Right there, and I got rid of that. 
your life your, your life is going to yes. your life is going to be more you go, you're going to draw closer to God this year. Yeah, especially where I'm going with my daughter. I'm, I'll be working right in the yeah. right there. In, this, in that church. You're going you to see. You're going to see. Jews, all Jewish ministry. Amen. Church and everything. And I'll be there. But I'll be there. Amen. I know uh, that I'm Amen. not going to be worried. Because I know all the God. You're praying. We're going to be praying for you too. Amen. I know it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, brother. Let me pray for you. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you know the plan that you have for this life. You have a plan, Father, not to harm him, but to bless him, to give him a hope in a future and an expected end. Now, Father, the things that is coming up in his heart and in his spirit, direct his heart, Father. Direct his every heart's desire and father may your kingdom come and your will be done in his life for the year 2020 you're going to God you're going to bring him to uh, to a greater a greater awakening within himself oh yeah yeah in the name of Jesus and father I cancel everything that's been spoken over him that wasn't sent by you Every word that was spoken over him by the human spirit, by the spirit of witchcraft, I cancel those words now in Jesus' name. Father, I release the anointing to lift that burden and destroy that yokes in Jesus' name. And now, Father, I ask you to speak to his heart afresh and anew. He sold a seed for a specific reason, Father, for a specific purpose. Now, Father, let your word be a lamp to his feet and a light to his path. And you will direct every step, Father. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Because with God, nothing is impossible. I bless him now in Jesus' name. And Father, I release the fire upon him. Fire. Fresh anointing and fire. Breathe, Father. Shaka, Shaka, Mashili. Thank you for it, Father. You receive it and be it unto you according to His will. I know you do because I'm different I'm not the same man that was here when I left I came back a different man God did a work in my heart in Texas in San Antonio, Texas God did a strong work in my heart and you guys are going to experience it too let me go ahead and pray for you you all right? Me? Yeah. 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 Never oh, felt that yes. before. You never felt that before? Not really. Well, I think one time with Olga. <laughs> she was yeah. here. Yeah, you did. Yeah. But this time, it was almost, I don't know, not even before we were down, but it was gone. I think I kind of smelled it. Yeah. It's like that shiny. Jesus. Father, 
Father, you of God and when the enemy race his ugly head against your people you always raise up a standard and today is no exception concerning this brother there's no exception you are still God in the midst of the storm just like when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had the opportunity to bow down to the God that they was commanded to worship, they refused they said we will not bow, we will serve the Lord our God and the enemy has come against this man's finances trying to get him to bow Father, in the name of Jesus Ah, yo, shagney, dan, do, ro. I rebuke that devil. I rebuke that devil now in Jesus' name. Off of his finances. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Father, I declare every need is met according to your riches and glory. According to your riches and glory. And what the enemy has meant for evil, God, you're going to turn around for your glory. I evict that devil that's working against him. I evict that devil now in Jesus' name. I serve you notice. You have touched this man of God no more. Father, I thank you and I bless this man. I bless this man in Jesus' name. Amen. You want me to pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Father, I thank you. Oh, Father, I counsel every demonic assignment against his spirit, soul, and body. Mind, will, and emotion. Father, I declare this man is delivered. I declare that he's set free. I command the demonic influence that worked against him, Father, is no more in Jesus' name. No more. <laughs> no more. In Jesus' name. Now you'll leave him and never touch him again. Father, I thank you for that. I declare divine help, divine help in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. I cancel every spirit of witchcraft that's been speaking over him. Every word cursed that's been speaking over him. I cancel them now in the spiritual realm. I cancel them now in the spiritual realm. Father, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. From the crime of the head to the soles of his feet. And I declare that he's free. I declare that he's free. In the name of Jesus. Fire. Fire. Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing for 2020. Fresh anointing for 2020. Jesus' name. You like this, don't you? <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's pray for them with us by the internet. We're going to go next door and enjoy some uh, birthday cake. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these that are with us by the internet. And I thank you, Lord God, that your hand rests upon them. I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I release fresh 
anointing, the fresh fire of God right now to flow freely. Should freely as I receive it, freely give it. Father, the same fire that rests upon me. Oh God, let it rest upon them right now in Jesus' name. Let it rest upon them right now in Jesus' name. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, you're free. I declare you're free. I declare you're free. And he that the Son set free is free indeed. God bless you all. Don't forget to join us on Sunday morning. I got a powerful message for you on Sunday morning that's going to really bless your soccer. We love you guys. Thank y'all for joining us in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye-bye.